Uh, another thing, Randy, um, you showed that the shape of the sperm really means a lot less than maybe it was appreciated. And there was a study years ago, you may remember this, where they look at the statistics, you show what are called correlations. Is this number associated with this outcome? And you mentioned all the things we measure on a semen analysis. After you do a, what's called a prep, it used to be called a sperm wash, call it what you will. How many sperm come through? And we call that the total modal. How many of the fast swimmers are there? And if you look at the associations, all the other numbers, the volume, the concentration, they kind of go away. They almost have no association. And the big, what's called partitioning of variance for our statistical people, the big number is how many come through the wash. And total modal uh, is the strongest predictor of, of success with insemination. Do you find that as well? Absolutely. And, and there's good published data about that. Uh, the most recent one that you, that you may have seen looked at the number of uh, moving sperm in that post-wash specimen, and they could correlate. So if it was 200,000, you had about a 4% chance for pregnancy. Right. If you got all the way up to 9 million, then it, it could be as high as 20% chance for pregnancy. And interestingly, though, when you had higher than that, 10 million, 20 million, it didn't get any better. So it kind of yeah. increased, increased, and then sort of plateaued. Yeah, there's not, I, I, when a guy's got more than 10 million in there, I say, hey, you could put, squirt half of it on the floor. It wouldn't make any difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. And we're going to put it all in there. We, we want the best. But, sure. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, those numbers, extremely important and extremely helpful at making predictions. So yeah. if you have a couple that said didn't get to that 9, 10 million that you want, and let's say they're doing that, you know, repeatedly. You say, okay, maybe IUI isn't going to be your best choice. Maybe, maybe yeah. we need to move on to something else more quickly. Yeah, some places draw the line around five million. We draw it around three million. If we're not getting three million dependably, and we're not getting the pregnancies, you say, hey, maybe IUI is not your not your best. Now our record is 0 0.23, 230,000 in an IUI yeah. that's successful. Now they do go home and have intercourse that night. Maybe he does maybe that's the combined effect, right. but we have had pregnancies super low. So even if we have a low number, we're still gonna instill it. We're still gonna still gonna do it. Right. Still gonna do it. Uh, and as I like to tell patients, we never say never. Uh, and so a hundred thousand, yeah, I don't expect that to be very efficient. Right. But can I tell you it's impossible? No. You know, are you familiar with this study that was done in the, in the UK, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago? They were looking at people that were on the waiting list to be able to do donor sperm insemination. So ah. I, I think socialized medicine, they, they had a, a long waiting list to be able to get in and do this. And somebody said, hey, I want to see how many of these couples. Now, so these are couples that the male partner had no sperm identified in their ejaculate at all. Zero. Zero. A, what we, got, we call azospermia. Azospermia. Ah. And so, because who else is going to wait for months to try to do this? Right. So they looked at these couples who had presumably had azospermia, and they said, well, how many people dropped off the list, and why did they drop off this waiting list? And they said there was somewhere around 3 to 5% of people got pregnant on their own. So these are guys who had no sperm on a given day. On a given day, yeah. On that semen analysis, but likely had some, right? They just didn't discover it on that one test. But even those couples, on occasion, not often, still be able to get pregnant. And I wonder if they so, looked at paternity, then you wonder, well, was the boyfriend? Yeah, I know, well, that's yeah, the, yeah. That's yeah. Not, yeah. In our field, it gets complicated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It gets complicated. Yeah. So I, I like to be optimistic and say, I think it was the partners, but yeah, you're right, there may be some there. I, I, I vaguely remember that, and I'll go even further back. When you were looking at effect early in the world of IVF, when like the Joneses brought IVF to the United States and you had to go to Norfolk, it was the only place, yeah. Eastern Virginia, you could do IVF. And you need a control. Well, how good is IVF? Well, you need a control group. Well, apparently two or 3% of the people on this long IVF wait list we're getting pregnant. Yeah. So you say, is I, what's IVF better than, right? Well, well it's, it's better than 3%, right? Yeah, right, right. Yes.